Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're regular here, you know I review many photographic, audio and video related products. Well recently I've been taking a look at a lot of Panasonic Lumix uh, Micro Four Thirds gear, but also Olympus Micro Four Thirds gear. And I love both. I'm actually filming the main shot on my Panasonic GH6 uh, as we speak. So that's the main shot with the Sigma 30mm lens and I have got it set to autofocus. So, um, we're all going to be curious to see how well it handles the autofocus. I've done quite a few shoots with it now and it seems to be fine, certainly for what I do. So I'm hoping, and even with my hands in front of my face and whatever, I'm hoping that's going to be completely fine. I've got my wide shot here with me Olympus OMD EM1X and that's got the Olympus 17mm lens fitted to it and I've got my Olympus OMD EM1 Mark III over my shoulder. The biggest downside with the Olympus cameras is the 30 minute record limit so I'm feeding them into Atomos recorders although I'm not with the one over my shoulder. Also it breaks up the files into smaller chunks which is a right pain in the butt for editing so that's going to be an issue with the Olympus CM1 Mark III over there. Um, only a pain in the butt because you have to then combine, combine with all the separate clips and find them etc etc it's a bit of a pain. Um, but what we're looking at today is a, a, a three-way camera shoot I've done actually and I'm not going to go into great detail but I was very curious. I went out to Avery with me uh, brother a couple of days ago and I took with me me uh, Olympus OMD EM1 Mark III and I also took with me the um, Apple iPhone 13 Pro which is here um, and that's been kind of a standard camera that I would use um, if I'm just going out somewhere because if a camera on it is great believe it or not it's really really nice camera uh, they are over sharpened the images when they come out of here so you have to tone the sharpness down when you edit them other than that the results that come out of the uh, iPhone 13 Pro are great but I recently picked up the Samsung S22 Ultra and that's a phenomenal phone um, it's a lovely display, blah, blah, blah. You know, there's loads of reviews online regarding the um, Samsung S20, blah, S22 Ultra. So I'm not going to go into detail about the phone itself. Um, other than to say, I love the phone. It's my standard phone now. I've got two SIM cards in it um, and it's great. But so I took this out, the iPhone 13 Pro and the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark III. Um, and I wanted to see if the EM1 Mark III was going to outperform two mobile phones. And I have to say, absolutely honestly, I preferred, and I'm going to go very quickly go through some of these comparisons with you, but I absolutely preferred the images that came off the Samsung S22 Ultra. Now, there is a caveat to this. Um, I set the phone to the 108 megapixel mode. So I've got on the two apps here. So I've got a standard camera app and then I've got another app which you have to download off Samsung's uh, store. It doesn't cost anything but it's called Expert Raw. So um, they're the two apps that I used with the Samsung phone. With me iPhone I just used its own generic app that comes obviously with the iPhone. Um, but with the Samsung, I had it in 108 megapixel mode for all the outdoor shots because I wanted to give it a, a, you know, a really good test. And that's the mode I would leave it set at when I'm taking photographs outdoors. I found that phenomenal. So when you look at these images, you will see that the vast majority of them that come off of Samsung were taken with the 108 megapixel mode because it is sharper, but they don't look over sharpened, which is my biggest concern with mobile phones. The manufacturers do tend to over sharpen the images and I don't like that. I like to tone the sharpness down a bit, um, but they come out really, really good. So that was the caveat with the S22 Ultra. I did use the 108 megapixel mode, not recommended when you're going into low light. It's not very good at all. You need to go out of that and go into the standard uh, 12 megapixel mode. because That's what the phone does. Um, when you're using it just in the conventional mode, it pixel bins all those pixels to a, a much more manageable file size, which is 12 megapixels. Um, and the images are still great, you'll see that. Now, the other thing I would say, don't study them on this YouTube video. Go to my Flickr page. I put a link in the description below to my Flickr page where you can actually view them there. 
uh, they'll all be there. So take a look at them there. That would be a much better place for you to actually study the images and they won't be edited. So you can study them to see how well the EM1 Mark III handled the different scenes and how these two phones handled the different scenes. So without further ado, let's have a quick look at this one here. So we'll compare this one uh, with, um, make sure we're on that. All right, so let's now uh, make sure we're on the right one. So we're gonna compare that one with um, that one. So I haven't worked out how to compare three at a time actually here, but um, so we can see here, the one on the left is taken with the Olympus. The one on the right is the 108 megapixel mode coming out of the uh, Samsung. And straight away, I think the color balance on the Samsung is better. Um, I think it looks more natural. The shadow detail looks better on the Samsung. And look at the cloud detail, completely blown out on the Olympus, but not on the Samsung. Now, I, I do know that you can, obviously the uh, Olympus is a .orf file, which is the Olympus raw file. So that can be put straight into, well, it's in Lightroom, and I can edit that and bring detail back in the sky um, and the shadow detail and what have you, so on and so forth. So yeah, definitely can do that. But straight out of camera, I prefer what the Samsung's done. Um, now, in the 808 megapixel mode on the Samsung, you can't shoot RAW, it only shoots JPEG. But I found that's fine, because I don't need to edit it. It looks lovely as it is. It actually doesn't need editing. Um, and I thought that was incredible. I really did. Um, let's take a look at another two. Let's take a look at, say, um, this one and uh, that one. Let's look at those. Now, the one on the left is uh, the Samsung, and the one on the right is actually the HEIC file that's come out of the uh, iPhone. But I still prefer the Samsung one. The Samsung one seems sharper. Um, you can see, uh, and also it's not as over-sharpened. See, the, um, the one that comes out of the iPhone just looks over-sharpened. And look at the detail in the thatched roof there. A lot more detail in the Samsung one than there is in the um, iPhone one. And I just think the colours, it just looks too bright on the iPhone one. The Samsung one looks, you know, looks really good. Let's just compare. Let's, let's uh, uncheck those. Let's go with that and with that one then, uh, which will be the Samsung against the um, Olympus OOF file, RAW file. Again, same as what we saw earlier. A lot more detail in the thatched roof here, uh, shadow detail. Uh, it's lost the shadow detail on the OR file and particularly in the skies. You know, skies, in the sky. And look at that sharpness detail. It looks very soft. The OOF file, i.e. Olympus file, just looks soft. The Samsung looks sharp without it looking overly sharp. Um, and the sky just looks far more natural in the Samsung one than it does in the Olympus file. So again, if you out taking photographs and you just want to be able to get home and be able to print those photographs or load them to your social media, show them to your friends without hardly any editing or no editing, the Samsung is going to be a better bet. And it's pretty much, well, if you're using it as your daily driver, your, your main phone, it's going to be with you all the time, isn't it? So these results blew my mind. But I can get incredible results from um, a mobile phone uh, to what I could, you know, with taking, you know, a bigger camera. I and mean, you look at indoor images, compare that with, um, let's say that, I don't know which one that is. So we're looking at the uh, Olympus file to the uh, DNG file, which is the one out of the, uh, that can, oh no, that's the one out of the um, Samsung. Now, in that, it's looking like the Olympus file is better than the Samsung file on this occasion, which surprises me. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah, the Olympus file. It just goes to show how good the Olympus cameras are. Ah, but look at the noise levels. There's a lot more noise on the Olympus file than what there is in the DNG file from the Samsung. So, 
you know, you do really have to be really, really careful. Yeah, there's more noise in the Olympus file. I can see it in the pews here. Can't see any in the, Olymp in the Samsung file. Again, because of the computational photography or the AI that's going on under the hood with the Samsung and the, uh, um, the Apple phone, the iPhone, they work really, really well in low light. So I would be happier taking my Olympus phone with me than I would my Micro Four Thirds camera. But the Micro Four Thirds are great in low light if you played around with it because you can lower your shutter speed without increasing the ISO because of the image stabilization in the camera, you know. Um, but yeah, uh, again, if we look at, uh, we take a look at this, you know, ooh, we look at that that one and let's say that one now the one on the left is the um iphone and the one on the right is the olympus again blown out the skies uh and the shadows are crushed a bit down here not on the um uh um iphone they're really good the only thing with the iphone as i say does tend to be just over sharpened just that uh just that wee bit um and you would need to bring the you know the sharpness down but uh again straight out of camera is it's a win-win situation for both the iphone and for the samsung phone but the samsung phone scores overall because of that uh, 108 megapixels with the main sensor with the ultra wide and the wide they're both very comparable um, but as I say, you take a look at them on the Flickr page. Now, one last one we'll look at uh, is this one here. So we take that with that. Now, the one on the left is the uh, Samsung. Look how the, the clarity and the detail and the brickwork in, you know, everything oh, once the computer loads it. Um, in fact, when you look at it there, you can see the brickwork is sharper on the Olympus than it is on the Samsung. Um, and the sign is just that little bit sharper. Uh, again, that is, I'm really pleased about that because, you know, it's expensive gear and it's nice that the Olympus lenses are so good and it is actually resolving the detail better from that point of view. But if you look at it as an overall image uh, and not do pixel peeping, particularly if you're going to print it at the size you, you took it, um, I think the Samsung is better. And I, I say that, look, the sign here, the Olympus has blown out the sky and absolutely totally blown out this white A board out the front of the shop. Now, you can clearly read this, the sign on the Samsung phone clearly. It's absolutely beautiful. It hasn't blown that out. And again, that's because of a com computational work that's going on under the bonnet with a Samsung, but not with the Olympus. With the Olympus, you're expected to edit that, you know, um, post, you know, post edit that. So which we can do. We'll have a very quick look at that. Uh, so let's go to that file. And um, we oh, didn't mean to do that. Hit the wrong button. Right. Let's go to that file. Now we'll go to uh let's go into develop and what we need to do let's bring in, let's get rid of that, that asset right so what we need to do is bring down we're in develop mode uh we don't need to worry too much about the sharpness but we need to take the highlights right down we might need to take the exposure down a bit yeah exposure down a bit bring up the shadows And there we have, very quick, there's a lot more work I can do to that. I can add a bit of clarity and a bit of vibrance, you know. Um, so, yeah, with a bit of very quick bit of editing, I can bring detail back into the shop sign, uh, the A board and the sky, and you've got a very presentable image. But straight out of camera, uh, if you want to upload straight to Facebook and Instagram and uh, so on and so forth, then the phone image is great and it will print beautifully as well. So um, I'm happier doing it that way than having to muck around with editing, you know, all the images. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's great. But as I say, what I will do 
all these images will be put on my Flickr page and then you go through them yourself and you make up your own mind what you think um, as to, you know, looks the best and whether you would, you would be happy with using a mobile phone for your main, you know, travel camera, not for uh, specialist work or specific jobs. If you're a portrait photographer, you wouldn't use a mobile phone. You can't get that bokeh. Um, as I said earlier, you just can't get the bokeh with a mobile phone. The sensors are too small. Um, there, it does have artificial bokeh modes called portrait mode. I haven't mucked around with that on any of these images. I've simply shot it as it is uh, without using the portrait modes. They've still got some work to do on getting those portrait modes to look natural. They're still they're pretty good and they're getting better and better. And I think within two or three years, the computational and the AI work that's going on behind the scenes with mobile phones is going to be so good. It's going to be indistinguishable between that and the professional camera. Could you imagine actually as a, a pro going out with a mobile phone in two or three years time to do a portrait session and this is what you take to your client? I think he'd probably be laughed, you know, he'd be laughed at and be told to go away. But um, it ain't going to be long before that is feasible. Um, but yeah, your mobile phone isn't going to get your bokeh. So the sharpness should be pretty good across the whole image because of that. You can't adjust apertures with a mobile phone. The aperture's set with that particular lens. So there are a lot of drawbacks with mobile phones. But, if, but for general photography, you know, going out and about, I think they're great and they're producing great results. And I love my Samsung S22 Ultra. So there we go. That one, for, as far as I'm concerned, that won the test out of these three cameras for the specific purpose I had, which is just, you know, a portable uh, camera to take out and about with you. So there we go. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Hit the like button if you find the content of my videos useful. Really, really appreciate that. And stay tuned for more videos relating to video photography, mobile phone photography, so on and so forth. Cheers for now. Bye.